Most people like to believe that we are now on the top of evolution, like we humans are the most evolved version of humans that exist. Uh, it's a common thought and I myself had that, I never questioned that until I saw a video on YouTube by Carrie McCarthy, it was one of my favorite channels actually. She's a great broadcaster, she's broadcasting from London, her voice is fantastic and she was talking about the work of Tony Wright. I don't know if he's a scientist actually, but he has, he has published a book about what fruit did for your brain. The, the notion is that there was once a forest with tropical fruit trees and the humans used to live there with no clothing and just pick the fruits and the fruits made the brain grow big and intelligent and then there was like a flooding and the fruit trees were destroyed and the people spread all over the world and started to eat grains and beans and vegetables and later meat and dairy and therefore our brain function declined and our brain size shrunk. Well, that, that's, a, that's a scientific fact. Our brain size is now smaller than it was 10,000 years ago. Tony Wright came up with the, this explanation about the fruit. And I like that explanation, but after thinking about it, I, I was thinking this cannot be true. There's no scientific backup for that. And even though it's nice to eat a lot of fruit, but I don't think that's how it worked. Looking at the real science, like Daniel Wolpert, for example, a real neuroscientist who, who is researching into the reason why we have brains. He has a great talk. Uh, the talk is actually titled The Real Reason for Brains. And he says the brain evolved not to think or feel, but to control movement. That's what I'm thinking. But hear it from himself. I'm a neuroscientist. And in neuroscience, we have to deal with many difficult questions about the brain. But I want to start with the easiest question, and the question you really should have all asked yourself at some point in your life, because it's a fundamental question if we want to understand brain function. And that is, why do we and other animals have brains? If you think about this question for any length of time, it's blindingly obvious why we have a brain. We have a brain for one reason and one reason only, and that's to produce adaptable and complex movements. There is no other reason to have a brain. So this is the end of a PhD project from one of the best robotic institutes, and the student has trained this robot to pour this water into a glass. It's a hard problem because the water sloshes about, but it can do it. But it doesn't do it with anything like the agility of a human. Now, if you want this robot to do a different task, that's another three-year PhD program. <laughs> It's blindingly obvious why we have a brain. We have a brain for one reason and one reason only, and that's to produce adaptable and complex movements. There is no other reason to have a brain. So according to this neuroscientist, which is real accepted knowledge, is we have, if the brain is really for movement, then we have to move ourselves. And that doesn't mean we have to do repetitive, boring movement. That doesn't grow a single brain cell. Re repetitive, Ever the same movement doesn't do anything for the brain. So you have to do complex, adapted movement. It doesn't help you if you do the sun salutation like two times a day for 10 years. It doesn't, it doesn't grow any, any brain cells because it's always the same. It doesn't help you to do like, there's websites about uh, brain functioning and the elderly brain and then they have uh, movements. I don't know what kind of movements they have. And, you have, they suggest like 10 different movements and then or, or, or grow eight in the, do like this in the air, do, 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 do. these exercises and I don't think they do anything good. Maybe in the beginning a little bit or some balance exercise or some ball games, they do a little bit but then it gets boring, it gets repetitive. And I think that's where the Feldenkrais method comes into play. We have many lessons and every lesson is a highly intelligently structured lesson. To understand one of these lessons, you might need to study for years. Some lessons are easy to understand, some are more difficult to understand, and there's a plentitude of lessons. You never run out of lessons. You always get new movements. You get to explore new things with your body, with your mind, how they connect, how you move in space, 
about proprioception, about how your shoulders are connected to your pelvis, for example. There's many different movements, a whole study. It's a big study, it's a, it's a lifelong study of exploring movement and always give you something more and give you something more to work with, give you something more to try out, to think about. So I don't say this is superior than yoga or gymnastics, it's something completely different. It's completely different because it's about neuroscience, about developing the brain, about getting more intelligent movements, maybe to rescue the brain, to stop it from shrinking, maybe. Uh, we don't know because we don't have a, substan a substantial number of Feldenkrais practitioners. We don't have a substantial number of people working with this method. I don't think that the people who, who studied Feldenkrais do it every day, do it every day for an hour. I think sports people are much more diligent and hardworking and pursuing their sports much better. So I suggest if you know Feldenkrais, do these lessons every day, keep working see what happens if you put in the effort to get some gains and to experience how you get more flexible first and then to experience how you get more knowledgeable about movement it's just a very fascinating field and then grow it from there i want to bring it to the next level do something new bring it to the next level work together to to grow this this knowledge and and to come back to being more human by working with our brain and our nervous system in an intelligent way. And for this, we have the Feldenkrais method. It's just, it's just there. We just have to take it and study it. So that's my motivation for today. Don't forget to get on the floor or on a chair or to stand somewhere and do a Feldenkrais lesson today.